young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Yep, everything's working. Here we are. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Uh, this is Season 4, Episode 20. And I, I'm your uh, handler co-host, Mr. JR here. And that is Mr. JM, the now owner of 11 number one singles at Country Woo! Radio. Not only double digits, double ones, baby. How about that, man? Yeah, uh, thanks to everybody out there who downloaded, streamed, whatever um, sang it at a show yeah um told whatever radio person play this song more out there um yeah it's pretty incredible man i i, it, I was talking to uh, my manager pete um yesterday he's like man can you believe it and i'm like eh, no not really you know it's it's, it's kind of crazy that that we're you know we've you go back to the first one, which was, let's see, I, I can't do math. That was 13 years ago, I think, when it actually went number one. Right. Um, with Small Town USA. And and to fast forward to all the different things um, that have that have happened to, to get to from one to 11, or from none to 11, uh, for that matter, I mean, it just takes – I'm so lucky. Um, I mean, I have an incredible team around me from record label to management um, to you. And, and it, you know, you you didn't go on the road with us this past week. Um, but um, when it was official, you know, it becomes official at midnight on – one of them's one night and one of them's another night. Right. But uh, Saturday night going into Sunday morning on at midnight, um, we had gotten done playing at at whatever where I think we were just outside of Chicago, and um, I just went and told everybody, shook their hand, told them in person, thank you, because this is all of us that make yeah. this happen. I mean, you know, I I get a lot of the glory, but man, it it takes every single person from the merch guy to you to me to the band guys to, i mean it's, yeah. it's everybody the pete joey and, cody jacqueline yeah. i mean george i mean, I mean ashley yeah. i mean amy you, you go adam i mean everybody i mean it, it goes Jeremy, on and on and on Reto, yeah. i mean all the are your buddies i mean yeah. it's just yeah. a ton of people yeah so it's it's incredible awesome. and I, i'm i'm super i'm super thankful and and humbled by it uh for those of you listening and watching i it's I, i'm kind of speechless really i mean every time we get another one and this is our fourth in a row which is unreal and maybe six out of seven or seven out of yeah. the last eight something like yeah. that it's just uh it's really incredible to you know to think about uh, jr you and i moved to nashville the same year almost the exact same time right um and so that was 20 years ago more than 20 years ago now um but um just to, to think we would be sitting here with 11 number ones we've sold probably uh five six million albums because we were in an era where they actually did sell mm -hmm. a, a originally yeah. in our career um and we probably have you know another 10 hit records like big hit records that didn't go number one right be a you know we had a number two we had a number four three we had well and, and, six. and we, you know what I mean? a bunch like, of good ones and just for timing and stuff some of them didn't ring the bell uh and right. the one the one that broke the streak and this would have been a consecutive all the way through streak would have was uh home sweet home when you did the, yeah. uh, for the motley crew uh album they did on big machine uh and did it with the crew and it people love it every night yeah. it's a hit it was a hit we I don't closed know. the show yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, and ruin the surprise <laughs> We close with that song every Half, night, and it's, yeah, just about how, people least, lose their minds. Yeah, yeah I mean, two, probably two thirds of the time that's the closer. Yeah, yeah it, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's so. I so think that, that went to of, like I don't know twenty five, right, twenty right. I don't know whatever, but um, right, but yeah, but the 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 funny thing is, fans, you could say, hey, write down Justin's eleven number one hits, 
or write down John Party's X number one hits or write down Dustin Lynch's whatever, you yeah. know, and nobody would get them all. Right. They don't yeah. care what it went to on the chart. Right. This is they would of think of other songs. Yeah. 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 We do it yeah, all people, the time yeah. with our heroes. We do it all the time with our yeah. heroes. Like, how did that only go to 12 or whatever? Like, what? You know, whatever. Uh, I mean, we've talked about it numerous times. I mean, the biggest song mm-hmm. we play every night, arguably, is Beta Hook. And I think it went to 15, 16, something like that. Yeah. I mean, so. Yeah. But that doesn't take away from the fact that. Uh, Country radio we has been there from the get-go for me. When TV hasn't been and this hasn't been and that hasn't been, for some reason for the last 15 years, ever since I started on my uh, radio tour in 07, uh, they've supported me uh, 99% of the time, and, and I, I'm so thankful and humbled and appreciative. and um, Yeah, it's exciting, man. And Yeah. Uh, here shortly we'll we'll announce our new single we're really excited about. They told me to stop talking about it. I can't announce it yet. I think we've already announced it on here. I, I think. I don't know. Maybe we haven't. No, but, not yet. We've teased it. But, we've teased it. We're going to have that exclusive But it's coming soon. out, I believe, I saw an email to, today. Uh, a, month from, a month from today. Next month. October yeah. 10th. Is 7th, that right? 10th. I thought 7th, 10th, somewhere in there. Something like that, yeah. So it'll be out shortly. We're already uh, lining up a, a photo shoot, and we're actually going to shoot a music video uh, for this song, which we haven't done in, I don't know, four or five singles. Uh, I think uh, you look like I know. That's why we drink. That was the one That's of us That's why we drink, sore. maybe the last one. Yeah. I, I can't remember if that or uh, the ones that didn't make it back home came first, but one of those is the last one we we did. And yeah, and w- ones that came back home was before. The, that's why okay, we drank. then it was. That's why we drank. We did that at my house. You were in it, and, and that's the that last right. video we we've, we've shot. And so, yeah. and and people have asked me uh, not a ton, but some people have like, hey, why don't you? You do music videos anymore? And we always try to provide as much. Uh, info on here um you know behind the scenes kind of stuff as we can and quite honestly the tv don't play them i mean i cmt's been good to me but um uh, uh, for the most part um but they don't what do they do one countdown show a week and that's it they yeah. you know they, they don't they just don't show them and um you know, the quite frankly, the the lyric videos are just as popular online now, it seems, as the the big music videos, and they cost a lot of money. I mean, mm-hmm. so right. Um, but we are doing one for this song. We're really excited about this song. It's actually, I, I will say, it's a duet. We've done a lot of duets in our career, but we've never singled one for my album. I had a. Uh, a top five record with uh, Thomas Red and um, BG. Brantley Gilbert, but it was on Brantley's album with yep. Small Town Throwdown. But outside of that, we've never done a um, well, that's funny a duet about it. kind of deal. Well, I guess Never Home seen. Sweet Home, a, but yeah, that was that was just kind of uh, yeah. some some answer things that uh, Vince did, uh, right. lead singer from from Motley Crue. But but this one is a true real life duet so we're excited about that and we'll be announcing that hopefully next week next couple of weeks something like that but anyway i digress um yeah it's uh it's awesome it's it i'm thankful and uh and i'm i'm happy to be back with you guys this week and you on yes. uh, on the podcast so thank you guys for tuning in yeah for sure yeah it, um it's it's uh it's it's incredible and i knew the first time you ever played that song that was gonna be a big smash i mean what a great tune and um glad it finally rung the bell we'll go we'll go uh part well i don't know i, I wish i had a better celebrate. nick saban nick saban-esque thing to say we'll celebrate this one for a minute but on to the next one baby you yeah know. we'll celebrate this one for 24 hours and then <laughs> right. on to the next <laughs> right yeah yeah you got exactly this. back to business but uh yeah talking uh, we can go talk about that a little bit if you want to um this past weekend we got we got to both play some football finally the college football yeah. is back uh in full swing uh you know uh, good we, guys both won yes we both won um uh, and it was kind of like one of those 
for a casual fan, it had to be great because you had all these games that most everybody did what they were supposed to do. It was some really good football. And then the last game, they had this random Sunday game and ended up being this barn burner down extra point oh block gosh. to win the game. Craziness. Uh, to cap off the weekend, just what you know, the, and everybody was watching that one because there was nothing else on on Sunday. Yeah, let's so, start with that game. I mean, yeah. So we're talking about LSU and Florida State, and for those who get bored when we talk sports, it's football season. I'm sorry, right. we got to talk sports. Yeah. Um, so and other artists are from these. Minutes. Other artists pull for these teams, yeah. so it's part of our ribbing thing we do and messing with yeah. each other and that kind of stuff. So 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 yeah, Florida State. <clears throat> I thought – I mean, you can tell me what you think. I thought they dominated the game. I mean, the mm -hmm. entire game. First half, I thought Norvell, their coach, made a couple of questionable decisions. Uh, he, he chose to go for a – I think they were up maybe two touchdowns or something like that. They were they were up, but not – maybe it was 10-3 or something. I think it was 10-3, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were up, but they had dominated the the, the get line of scrimmage, and the LSU just really couldn't move the ball. And anyway, they're down in the low red zone, and it's fourth down and goal from the I don't know the five or the, something like that. Well, they choose to go for it instead. Of, I'm and I'm always a proponent, especially early in the game, get the points. Oh yeah, get the points. Oh yeah, because <clears throat> there was. There was very little time left in the first half, and um, they got the ball coming out second half. So, let's say it was 10-3. I think that's right. I could be wrong. Um, you say you make a chip shot field goal, it goes to 13-3. You get the ball coming out. You go score a touchdown. That's a, that's a you know, a three-score game right there. Right. Well, they go for it, don't get it. All the momentum swings to the other side. They did that like the whole game. They had a yep. chance to put it. Long story short, they ended up winning the ball game, but they had to, They had some luck to yeah. do it because LSU. They should have finished them off earlier. They should have finished them off. They should, the game felt like they were up by three touchdowns. Right, yeah. And they it ended up winning. They ended up winning on a uh, blocked PAT. Yeah. Which was the second block kick of the day for LSU. Right. Uh, so, yeah, spoil Brian Kelly's um Oh, man, and the uh, reporter as, and the reporters who showed up late. And then, did, did you see you that? See that? Did, did yes. you and I send each other that? or did No, you... but I saw oh, it. Oh, gosh. Goodness. No, I sent you one yeah. that was a picture of him, and it said that he liked tomatoes in his gumbo. <laughs> or in his, yeah, something like that. And anybody but, uh, from South Louisiana knows that's a no-no. Yeah, this guy. Um, but, hey, welcome yeah, to the so, SEC, buddy. You know, I yeah, mean, that schedule's, they just, that schedule's man, tough. They, and, they just – they played poor. and uh, But they go on a 99-yard drive, and they really shouldn't have got to run the last play that they scored to give themselves a chance to go into overtime. Uh, it was a mistake by the official. They said the kid – went out of bounds and he and he didn't so that the time should have ran out they shouldn't have got to run another but play they got but they got to stop it because an official or scored yeah, messed up but then um anyway they, they blocked mm. the pat but yeah yeah the uh the video if you guys out there are are interested in in college football and the the you know the dynamics of everything it's pretty funny a, a, a reporter comes in i believe this was yesterday or monday you know, like first part of the week press yeah. conference. So you're recapping the previous week game, and then, and then looking forward to the next week's game. And Brian Kelly pops off. The head coach of LSU pops off something smart alecky to her about. Uh, he said next time we'll show up on time. Yeah, something about not being there on time. And uh, she goes, well, if you'd win, maybe I would. <laughs> yeah, and he said, well, it's not about winning. It's about being on time. It was pretty funny. I mean, it's a, hey. Pretty good. It's a, it, it's a lot a lot more eyes on you down here than there were up at Notre Dame, buddy. And uh, Yeah. It, but, uh, yeah, so it's no, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and speaking of that, yeah, Notre Dame uh, had Ohio State all day, and then somehow at the end, Ohio State came back and won. Were you surprised by that? I thought yeah. Ohio State was going to beat them by four touchdowns. I don't. Re I didn't really have a clue. I assumed it'd be a you don't battle care. for the <laughs> battle for the bottom over there. Yeah, they but a bunch of sloppy football that they all love and nobody down here would could care anything about. Yeah, pitiful. they Ohio State didn't look good, man. They they um they um 
I think they were favored by like three touchdowns and right. and and they 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 won. I think it was twenty one to ten. They didn't look good, but yeah. Uh, Maybe Notre Dame's a little better than people thought. I don't. I don't yeah, know. I, I, it, I think they're yeah. de- de- defensively they're all right, but offensive wise they're they're uh, struggle bus central. Yeah. But uh, F- Faith Alabama, Florida. yeah, I was gonna Alabama say, looked perfect. SEC, I mean, yeah, fifty five to nothing. I'm sure Saban's pissed about something, but just I watched that game. <laughs> I, you know, I, you know, I give them a lot of credit. If if and they they pulled they pulled they scored the very first two plays of the second half, and then that, they pulled – that was it. Because, I mean, they could have laid – I told Shrez they could score 100 points today. It's just – it was rolling. But, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I saw some good things. So, I mean, young receivers. Um, they look good. Look good. I was impressed by that. Everybody else, business as usual. I mean, you know, it wasn't, wasn't that kind of explosive opponent, but they were solid. They were trying to. <laughs> um, and, you know, it what it, what it was. Um, you know, talking about that, SEC – uh, everybody won except for LSU. So, yeah. thanks, buddies. Um, yeah. Florida, big win. That uh, was a big win. And that, that was a clo- that was a tight game, too. I didn't get yeah. to watch all of it because we were on stage. But um, that was one that could have – kind of like the LSU game, could have gone either way. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was really tight. Um, Utah, correct me if I'm wrong, but Utah was ranked – who was ranked seventh. I don't know what they are this week, but um, – uh, was in the red zone getting ready to score to win the game with, what, 30 seconds left or yeah something like that and throw a pick in the end zone. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Florida wins. But, uh, but yeah, tight. But a big win for uh, – that's another first-year head coach uh, yeah. for, for Florida. Um, he came from Louisiana. Right. Um, Billy Napier and – yeah, that was that was inter- their quarterback looked good. Yeah, that Richardson. SEC. Hey, he and really uh, talking about quarterbacks, um, KJ <sighs> early in the game when he was running the ball, man, I thought, dude, that's it, that's it right there. Yeah. If you get him some space and let him move like that and get some downfield blocking, oh man, you guys yeah, look, hey, you guys look good. That was a tough game, but you guys look good. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because you know, three years ago, uh, we would have been just beside ourselves beating a, anybody for to be honest mm. with you but much less a top 25 team and we we were in pretty much in control of the whole game it felt like but everybody's kind of like eh, we didn't look that great we were a little sloppy here we didn't yeah. didn't do this great we did but it's it's my point is it's so fun to be at that level again where you're like well we played kind of crappy at times and we beat a top twenty-five team that was, by right. the way, in the playoff last year. Right. And right. has lost. I don't think they've lost a a regular season game in two years. They've lost in the you know a bowl game or right. a playoff or. And so, um, I was pleased. The only thing that was a, kind of a bummer, KJ did look really good, like mm-hmm. you said. I think he went eighteen for twenty-six passing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had two hundred twenty-four yards on the ground and 223 through the air something like that so really balanced and yeah he's just a difference maker with his legs man and yep. a lot of times it makes you nervous to run your quarterback but he's like 240 40 pounds, pounds. yeah say, i think he trimmed down a hair four, they said he, and he, but he's yeah. even he just looks better i mean he looks yeah looks like a ball player for sure and and he he just makes some plays with his legs like there was a late third down conversion he had on like a third and nine or something we're trying to run the clock out and he he just picks it up with his legs like no big deal he makes it look easy so Mm -hmm. yeah it um i I was happy we won i'm I'm glad the game's over because cincinnati quite honestly was a lot better than i thought they'd be they lost so much from their team last year i thought eh but they're good i think they're a really good team and honestly i think with their schedule i think that'll be the only game they lose all year Wow. Yeah, maybe so. I Probably think they'll so. be. I think they'll be eleven and one at the end of the year, or ten and two, maybe. But uh, yeah, hopefully we play better. But the only bummer that I was going to say is we lost our two best uh, defensive backs, and I don't know how long they're going to be out. It could they could be back this week. I doubt it. Hopefully, in a couple of by a couple of weeks from now, when we play A and M, and one of them's a team captain. Oh man, the safety. I mean, it was our two like it's our it's our nickel 
and our safety. Mm. And the two studs on the back end right. of the defense. So, you know, yeah. that's hopefully, kind of a bummer. But Hopefully it's nothing um, major they can bounce hopefully back. Hopefully it's nothing major. Yeah. So, uh, I'm trying to think what other games there were that were – Georgia – just stomp oh, that ass. Yeah, roll I mean, just, Oregon up. And that Bo Nix from Auburn over there doing Bo Nix stuff again. Oh, yeah. Poor guy. Just, I'm telling you, man. They, you know, everybody's going, well, they lost, I don't know, 15. Uh, Georgia looks, Georgia looks, many players. His, Georgia looks bigger and better than they did last year, really. Yeah. They everybody's just, going, they won't ever be able to play defense like they did last year. Will they give up three to Oregon or something? Yeah. Their I mean, defense, they're defense, they're. Whip the jokers, tails, man. They showed a play, a replay of their defensive tackle pushing down Oregon's, I, th- I guess it's their right tackle or right guard. They said he's 6'6", 330 pounds, and this, this defensive lineman from Georgia threw him down like his like it was his little brother or something. Like a rag doll? I mean, just – <laughs> to the. I mean, that guy falling to his knee and – and he not and an athletic play looking too. The guy was six six three thirty. He threw to the ground. I'm thinking, goodness. Well, man, I'm telling you, it, they're rough, buddy. I, I told you last year. I I went to the Arkansas Georgia game. It was at Georgia. We were in the top ten. It was they were. I think they were number one at the time, and we were ten, or they were two, and we were ten. Whatever. It's top ten. We were not the tenth best team in the nation. Yeah. We were probably about the 20th, but we had won a couple of big games. And anyway, I watched from the sidelines, like on where by the team. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a joke. I mean, <laughs> it was just, a joke. I mean, they they, were, you look out there, and, and we had big dudes, but their dudes were like – it was like men amongst boys. I mean, it right, was just, there right, was no other right. way to put it. I mean, it, I mean they, like, all, they, they all were, looked like pro athletes. They looked like the Hulk. The, all, <laughs> They're all just you know, jacked. Yeah, like okay, so we, like oh let's God. say we look like it's the Thor Rock. And Hulk. <laughs> we look like the Rock. They look like the Hulk. I mean, right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, we're big, but they were huge. And I'm telling you, every play, it don't matter if it was offense or defense, they were moving us five yards because I was staying even with the line of scrimmage, and it's like, <laughs> or I mean, it was. It's I'm like I told. Our buddy Don that was with me, I'm like, there's no possible way we can win this game. We can't yeah. move the ball and we can't move them. I mean, it's just – it's it's impossible. Somebody bow up <laughs> I mean, and knock them down a notch and, you know, they, I, I don't know. I think it's up to y'all this year. I'm going to send some weed to some of their players. They go smoke in their park, <laughs> parking lot in their car and get busted yeah. and have to miss the yeah. Alabama game. That'd be fine. No kidding. Oh, geez. No kidding. But, yeah, I, they I look kid. scary again, man. They yeah, I mean – um, and you know Oregon's probably not that bad of a team, but they just got they just got slapped around. It wasn't even close. Yeah, and the other team that people are ooing and aahing over, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Let me let her Is, out. Hold on a sec. Okay. Sorry. No, you good? Uh, she she saw Reese come from the back, and that was it. She had a fit. She's ridiculous. But anyway. Yeah, the uh, other game. The other, yeah, the other team. People are ooing and on over, and I'm like, nah. It, it's just another one of his teams is USC because they beat somebody nobody big, and uh, you know Lincoln Riley's out there now. Oh and yeah, I'm like he's he's done this every year. He'll go score fifty points and this and that, but they can't stop nobody. Right. He ain't never been able to play defense on a team of his ever. Yeah. And so I don't know. I, they'll be just they'll be they'll be what they're what you about what you expect. They'll have some studs and they just won't get it done. It's gonna be an no. interesting season. Cause I I noticed in our game and your game and the few the games that I really paid attention to, there is a lot of people who moved around in the transfer portal. Transfer portal. Oh yeah. Um, I mean every that was a that was a comment on every first couple downs on or sides of the ball for each team it would be explaining who came from where and who they what their role was on that team and the, and uh so yeah, I, it's crazy man i mean yeah. we've got a starting linebacker that started for y'all last year we've got a starting i think he plays nickel maybe or he's a some kind of db uh that started for georgia all season last season it was won, a, a won a national championship. Started. 
Yeah. Why the hell is he at Arkansas? I mean, I'm happy to have him, but yeah, right. But what could, the hell? Could be over man. there at Georgia, like, getting ready to probably win number two. I know? mean, good night. Yeah. And then we had a team captain, four year starter for us, transfer to LSU. Uh, another starter for us, not a, not a captain, but like a two or three year starter for us, transfer to LSU. We got a starting defensive end. And a starting cornerback transferred to us from LSU. So, we just, like, traded two players. It's like NBA I mean, years, trading players. I, it's crazy, man. It's weird. I don't get but it. But it is what it is. I guess we got to get used to it. But Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, but, and then coming up uh, this weekend, as we record this, this is the 7th of September. This weekend um, kicks off NFL football. Um I yeah, know we've got a new. That's why I got my Saints Steelers game. gear on. Yeah, yeah, we got to play. Uh, I think we play Cincinnati the first game, which ugh, I'm not looking forward to because Cincinnati I think is going to be really good this year with Burrow back. Yeah, it's like uh, it's the same as in college. All these teams shuffle around a little bit, and everybody you know is preseason hype and uh, you know stuff. But who really knows? We'll find out here soon. Who's made of what? You you can be surprised. You know, I think y'all be pretty good this year. Well, we've lost a few. We've got a few back, and I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I hope so. I mean, I'm optimistic, but we, I mean, we got rid of, just got rid of one of our best DBs to Philly. Philly's up there loading up. Whatever they're doing in Philly, they're trying to stack. Yeah. Which. Yeah, they, they seem to think that they're going to be pretty, pretty good, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking for, I, first game, actually, as we're recording this, comes out tomorrow. So by the time you guys get this, it should be tonight, I guess. Yep. Thurs, yep. Thursday night game. I don't know who's. Who's in? You in know, that and game. I should have all this pulled up, but I don't. I can look it up real quick. Uh, but yeah, it'd be be good to get the um, NFL back. It it was awesome to have college football come back, but it's just even more awesome when you know Sunday all day you got football too. Right. You know. Yep. Um, you just know when when that uh, when the new uh, Sunday night football song you hear that music start to play, you just hurry up. And bum, turn it bum, down. Bum, bum. <laughs> It, when the when, so when the song thing starts, so you, that's when you go start the food and the doing stuff. You stay busy for about ten minutes, let that end, and <laughs> come back and enjoy the ball game. Yeah. Oh, good game tomorrow uh, or tonight as you're listening. Uh, Bills Rams. Ooh. Uh, yeah. The Bills were really really good last year. If you remember, lost to Kansas City in <laughs> overtime. I believe that's correct. Yeah, and um, go back and on, go back on like the craziest best game of all time. And go I back remember like, it being talked about. Right. And go back like 5 mm. years ago, would you think Buffalo would have been any good? No. You know they what got I'm it, saying? Man, they got they got it right at quarterback, man. He's that's a stud. A, that's he big. is an absolute stud. And then uh and then the Rams obviously won it all last year, so that that should be a really good game. Could be a preview of the uh the Super Bowl. They're on opposing conferences aren't they i think that's a uh, an interleague game i could be wrong but uh i'm pretty sure pretty sure um but uh, anyway it's neither here nor there uh so uh changing shifting gears uh i got a funny thing to show you and and, and tell you and all you guys out there watching and listening so I don't know if we've discussed this or not over the last few months, but so I don't know, maybe six, eight months ago or even a year ago, maybe I started kind of like driving at night bothered me. I used to love driving at night because there was less cars on the road. And yes, me too. <laughs> when I lived in Nashville, it's about a six and a half hour uh, drive to home something like that and if i would you know i would come home quite often when i i wasn't doing stuff this was prior to me having a record deal and this was when i was kind of trying to make it i guess if you will <clears throat> and, and kate didn't live there and anyway long story short i i i would drive home quite often hang out with my parents or friends or whatever and because I was homesick and I would always leave after work if I get off at 
you know, eight o'clock at night, I would just take off and get home at two or three or whatever. And there was a lot less traffic and certainly it didn't bother me driving in the dark. And right. But over like the last year, I've noticed like, man, it's my eyes are kind of it's kind of bothering me. Like, I, oh, yeah. like I have to concentrate a lot more or something. Oh, yeah. Like, you like I'm like, I don't know if it's like squinting or like just. It takes a lot more effort, in other oh, words. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And light, like headlights bother me. Yep. And things are a little more blurry. And they're just not Looks like crystal, rings around them. They're just not crystal clear like they, they were. And oh, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. You give it a few so, more. <laughs> and so I start, you know, kind of noticing that with the TV or the. You know, over time, over this past yep. year. And so I can't hear. I, I mean, JR knows. Like, I listen to the TV incredibly loud. I've played loud music for so long. I can't hear. I didn't have good ears to begin with. I, I'm like your brother. I had tubes like four times because I had, I mean, I'm talking about as a small child. I, I mean, I, I just had major ear problems. I can't scuba dive because I, I can't even go underwater with my ears still to this day. So, or if I do, I really pay for it. So, okay, got that. But I could always see great. Like yeah. I could see stuff that other people couldn't. And, and I'm right. like, oh, you can't read that? And they'd be like, no, how the hell are you reading that? Like way yeah. out there or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, I noticed like I can't really do that anymore. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, I don't need to read that way over there, but used to, I could, you yep. know. I'm talking about 200 yards over there or whatever. So I'm I'm kind of having this conversation with Kate, who's worn glasses since she was a child and as blind as a bat. I mean, her glasses are like that thick. And and I'm like, hey, you know, you think maybe so, something happened or I need to – she's like, uh, yeah, I think something happened. I think, like, you probably need glasses. I'm like, no, I don't need glasses. I'm saying maybe I'm, maybe my eyes are sick or something. I don't know. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, need so a rest. Then, yeah. So then I'm, Some eye I'm drops. telling, I'm telling Pete my, and that, that's the other thing. My eyes have been like burning, a lot, and um, and like I just I'm rubbing. I'm like, why are my eyes burning so bad? You know. Well, so I'm telling Pete also, my manager for those out there listening. Obviously, Jr knows him well and and uh i'm telling him the same kind of he's like uh yeah it just kind of happens like right at 40 it, they just kind of kind of do that yep i'm like crap so i'm telling my mom this is a week ago i, I guess a week and a half ago i'm over at her house i think south was over there i went to get him or something i don't know and she's like here try these readers i got them at like walmart you know, like the magnifying yeah. readers. Uh, they're not prescription. Uh, but, and I'm like, really? Like, I ain't, come on. I put them on, look at my phone. I'm like, I'd be damned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works like a charm. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. So I went to Dollar General the other day. I got me three pair of these bad boys. And I've oh, worn them Lord. ever since. <laughs> yeah. And I'm telling you right now, I've never had more fun, fun playing Boom Beach. You can see I mean, it I can so see good now. I see everything now. I'm not going. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Like, it's oh, yeah. crazy. I'm looking so, at blobs. So my mom's like, you're going to have them laying all over the house, which I do now. Um, and so I'm going to have to get me some for the bus. So have you experienced this yet or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So have you yeah, ever like, resorted to this? Well, uh well, um, yeah, kind of. I hadn't yet, but, um, you know, yeah, mine came on. Is same, I'm the exact same as you, man. I used to have 2015 vision growing up. I could see really good. Uh, over, I drove at night all them years, the van, middle of the night, fine. Used to like yeah. it. Didn't as bother of you like a bit. I, nothing. Loved it. And as of about four or five years, three, four or five years ago. Which I'll would be 40, basically and, be my exact age. And I'll be 43 on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, and I'll be 39 in a few months. Yeah. So it's they almost started, identical. It started going down. I noticed it a little bit here and there, and I thought the same thing. I said, well, I need more rest. I need some, you know, my eyes are just dry, <laughs> my allergies, something, I'm need sure. need some drops or yep, something. something. I'm yeah. sure it's just dry. 
you know, or you know, change of weather, something. And then, um, yeah, but then I got to where at night, yeah, I just it's tough. It's like you said, it's a lot of work. It's not fun. It's uh, it's just a lot of work. And then um, when we had Cowboy driving with us, this was this would have been Halloween maybe during the pandemic or the year before the pandemic, 19 or 20, we were at your house and Cowboy and I guess Mark at the time were there in the bus and y'all, um, you were you were about to come out, we were getting on the road and I was saying something to them about my eyes being bad driving up and I was like, yeah, hopefully we get back in time Sunday so I can drive back without having to drive in the dark because I don't really like driving in the dark anymore. Yeah. And um, Cowboy had just got some glasses and I said, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have to go get checked and see about that. And he's try these on. And I was standing on the door doorway of the bus to, looking towards your front door of your house. And it was during Halloween, I remember, because Kate had something up on the door, some kind of something. And from the bus steps, I could see there was something on the door. It was like couldn't oh, tell what it was uh, at all, at all. I just thought it was some kind of <laughs> which was, is probably for everybody out there is probably what sixty feet, eighty feet. I don't know. Yeah, thirty, forty yards tops. Yeah, yeah. something like thirty yards. Yeah, and and so and I'm looking. I just think, oh, it's this black sheet thing on the something. It's a something up there. I put Cowboys glasses on. Same thing. Instantly. Oh, it's a skeleton. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. There's the this. There's the that. I can read the uh, who made it. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. it's definitely definitely something. Take them off. Blob. Yeah. Put them on. Definitely. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So I gave them back to Cowboy and thought, yeah, that settles it. I'm gonna go. So I line up, go to the eye doctor up here. Of course, that day they worked great, and uh, he said, you got a little bit. I mean, you might could get this low, low percentage wow. something, and they worked really was fine that day. That day they were just really working wow. good. And so, but I need, I, I'm sure if I had something like that, something not, just something easy to have here. Dude, there, I, I, I'm telling, and these have are. Have you tried like them going I, down the road yet? Do you need them for driving? No, no, or is there a different no, kind? No, no, it's just for like super close. So like right now, if I put them on, like, I, I mean, I see you much more clearly. I mean, yeah. I don't want to look like a nerd to y'all out there, but like, like yeah. if I look past my computer now, it's a completely blurry. But I mean, up close things, like my phone, yeah. it's never looked more clear to me. Like, and when I take them off, wow. I'm like, it takes a while to like. It's crazy. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. And I now, remember, I remember Joey I going the, through it to yeah, the point where he couldn't see nothing. And I got like three different levels of oh okay um, magnification magnification yeah thank you um, and I tried all I've tried all three and fortunately the lowest one is what works best for me right now so that's good right. that's a good sign I guess so it's it's not yeah. bad it's not like but man reading on your phone or something I mean it makes all the difference in the world. It, right. To me, it does. I yeah. Mean, so, so Kate's been making fun I'm of me. On, She's so I, I like I'll get in my chair and I'm doing the whole because it, it's just what you do. Like you know, I'm I'm doing this number, <laughs> and then they'll they'll, they'll you look like so, my uncle. So so the Kate will say something or kids will say I go <laughs> do this number, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't get used to this. Oh my but, gosh. Hey, hey, it works, man. So, whatever. I told Kate, I go, look, I'm getting gray, I'm balding, um, I can't hear, and now I can't see. So this is get used to. It. Next <laughs> it's thirty only years. Worse from Next here. thirty years. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I, I so I, yeah, I want, I want to try some on for some stuff on the bus, and I've uh, I actually mentioned to um, Dude, ten bucks a Dollar General. Yeah, worth a shot to try. I don't know if I need yeah. I really want something for like, you know, like I need something for like go, when we're doing stuff. Like it'd be nice to have them at the show and stuff. I'll I, I tell you <laughs> what I did. I actually asked a buddy of mine um, who is with the uh, Blue Otter polarized sunglasses that mm -hmm. we've we've gotten. And um, I've, I asked him to let me know when the prescription, when I can do a prescription in those. Because if I can get me a pair of nice sunglasses with a prescription – tinted mm -hmm. lens in it I, I, yeah. that's what i'm thinking i need because even yeah. for me it's not even at night like in the daytime uh and it comes and goes but in the daytime yeah, sometimes i comes and goes too in the daytime even i'll be somewhere like say we're at the show and i'm we're walking around and I, we're at a fair and i'm like i can see the fair stuff but like 
I can't really make out what it is. You know, it's some colors over there. You know, it's a it's some kind. But I, you can't read the sign. Have to get get real close to it before I realize. Oh, that's that's the elephant ear place. Oh, that's the, uh, you know, snow cone. Right. Place. You know, it's like. I uh, couldn't read them as well. I, I used to could see. Yeah. I used to could have saw them without any effort, and now I'm like, let me get a little closer so I can read that sign. And you're kind yeah. of doing this number, yeah, right. It's pretty so. wild. So yeah, so when you see these laying all over the boat, we can just share them. We'll just. But yeah. I'm telling you, go get you a pair. You'll be like, Holy I'll get me a God. pair. When you look at your super- phone for the first time, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have to concentrate. I just see it. I just yeah. instantly see it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, oh that's my funny. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, I'm gonna have to. I'll get me a pair of those and be Bobby Bones for uh, for for yeah. Halloween this Halloween. year. I'll get me a pair of the goofy glasses. I go. need some of them big thick ones. Um, hey, oh, I had man. some. So that's yeah, funny though. That. Well, you know, it's just we've said it about other stuff too. And that's why I'm trying to start. We we got to get back in the gym too. It's like anything else. It's just kind of, it's it's not gonna like reverse back, go back the other way anytime soon. So you just no. got to work harder. <laughs> Work harder, no. I guess. Like Dallas, you if know. It, if it gets bad enough, hell, I'll get LASIK. That's what I always think about a lot of things, too. Like even with your <laughs> ears and stuff. I'm like, it, one day, aren't we working towards making things better? Won't one day science and, and uh, uh, surgeries and stuff be to a level to where they, we can fix stuff better? Because I know they're doing stuff every – you know, all that's the high level stuff. You think at some right. point we'll live long enough to, oh, we got this breakthrough and, you know, I, I mean, LASIK was huge enough, but, you know, oh, even yeah. better, even be- improvements on all the stuff they already have, you know, knee replacements. And, you know, I, who was I? Just, somebody I was just talking to the other day was talking about a surgery they had. And it was basically like something that used to be a huge deal. And it was, they right. were like, dude, they, they go up under your arm and do this two inch incision and they do it all from there. And it's like, and then I drove myself home and I'm like, and it was like something crazy, like a, somebody got their shoulder replaced or something. Anyway, wow. So I'm just thinking one day for a lot of my stuff, and you're in the same boat, that our stuff that's going to compile on and as we go through our 40s and 50s, that maybe yeah. one day we'll, we'll get some breaks on some of this stuff and they'll be able to, you know. Never know. I always, I always want to get my sinuses fixed. They've been jacked since I was born, I think. And uh, yeah. I'd love to one day get it to where, you know, all that stuff You can stuff just breathe works. without Yeah, <laughs> breathe really good. Yeah, but uh, but I, I don't want to go. Then you talk to a few people, but it's like a lot of surgeries too. I remember when I when I had my shoulder done, half the people say it's going to be the worst thing you ever did. The other half going to say, "Oh, ain't nothing to it." Oh yeah, it's like uh, the one that gets me the most on that one is a vasectomy. Yeah, like everybody, you know, you talk. I've talked to one buddy of mine's had it, and he's like, "Dude, it was nothing. I just went in, boom, done." got to sit on the couch and for three days or whatever the next guys makes it sound like they cut your pecker Stuff completely off, yeah. off i mean like <laughs> right. it's like it's like i'm like oh that, so i'll get built up and i'm like all right i'm gonna do it and then i hear i go oh it hurts to hear you know <laughs> yeah so i don't know yeah. Yeah, I guess everybody's it, t- pain tolerance is different but right. and i think it depends on the doctor you go to also a lot I mean, of that too. Think about yeah. it. I mean, there's better singers than others. There's better athletes than others. There's there's bound to be better doctors than other right. doctors. I mean, I don't well, know. And, and just for procedure stuff, some that rush through, some that just got a better <sighs> equipment, some that get better place. Right. You know, different things like that. There's probably plays into factor. How, are they trying to turn yeah. and burn? Are they like, oh, come hang out for the rest of the day? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. so anyway, I had a uh, I had a lot of people send in questions and comments over the last couple of weeks. I thought we could uh, we could hit a few of those if you want to. Uh, I'm sure, sure. it'll sp- spin us off in some cool cool directions. Um, had one. Hey, this is about football too. We can go ahead and hit this one. Um, this is from Donnie uh, at Blake's Dad nine two four on Twitter. Said Jr. Can you ask Justin about the time he sang the national anthem at Lambeau and what happened the night before? Also, y'all should watch the Manti Teo doc on Netflix. Uh, big fan of y'all's. First of all, um, I I don't know if you've watched it all. I know you yeah. watched some of it. Yeah. But I I think we both have watched the entire. Yeah, we uh, did. We I Manti it. Teo deal. I thought we talked about it, but. Maybe I'm wrong. We may have since then. This this was from a um, month ago. I'm just doing. But some yeah, it's it's up. it's really really interesting. I would urge anybody who hasn't to to go watch it. Yeah, I feel terrible for the guy. Football. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, yeah, it makes you feel feel awful for him. 
And uh, so, but as far as the... Um, Makes you think they should about prosecute these people who pretend to be people and stuff and things oh, like that. Oh, yeah, be, no doubt be about some it. More because there, was, there, there were no repercussions. No. At all. No, I it mean, cost that man than, a bunch of money on top of all the pain and suffering yeah. and emotional distress. I, I, I was thinking about that. I would think that they could, that he might could have. I don't know. I was almost thinking, and he, could he probably have a, could sue her, but he's probably a defamation his, type case or something. But he's probably I don't know. like it's probably in their culture. You probably don't do that kind of stuff. You yeah, know? I don't know. I don't know what the lawsuit would be, but you should be able to. Something. I don't know. You know, I don't know if there's any attorneys that yeah. listen to this, but. Yeah. Anyway, um, what happened? Um, Lambo. Yeah. So uh, nothing bad. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Didn't, I don't know if it wasn't meant to read that way, but um, no, it was great. So I just talked about it early on when we were talking about with a woman you love going number one. So one chart. There are two main charts in country music: um, BDS or Billboard is. Uh, that that's the same thing um, and uh, media based so those are the two charts that <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term matter I guess uh, yeah. in country music anyway I don't I don't know about other genres but so you could be one in one chart and three in another or you know, most of the time they're right there together but they have different point systems um and so one of them clo chart closes which means it's officially wherever you're at that's where you are for the following week um closes saturday night at midnight which obviously turns into sunday morning the next one is the next day at the exact same time. So we were playing a show on a Saturday night at a place called Tom, Dick, and Harry's, which is not there any longer, I don't believe. If it is, it's something else. <laughs> it was a club. Um, it really, actually, a cool club. It was new at the time. This was in '09, uh, And we were on stage when small town usa officially went number one we were still playing on stage because you know jr Art clubs you play later and yep so it was midnight we knew it was coming we took shots on stage that night after the show obviously we celebrated it was our very first not only very first number one it was our very first hit <sighs> and i was already set to sing the national anthem at lambo the next day and it was an uh, I believe it's a noon game. Don't in that when NFL starts is noon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a noon game, and needless to say, I didn't feel great. Um, <laughs> I had I had I had never uh, sang the national anthem so uh, anywhere. I mean, I knew I could. I wasn't I wasn't nervous or anything. But um, so we're walking into the stadium. We've all get, I mean my record label exec all the band crew everybody's pounding headaches and hung over and the whole bit and uh which t tells you how far we've come the other night i just went around and thanked everybody <laughs> and went to bed <laughs> yeah it thank y'all good night and tells you the difference in in 13 14 years yeah uh yeah we didn't stay up doing all that but um but anyway uh so we're walking through the parking lot up to the stadium and my record label executive who still is in charge of my record label today uh he's a huge packers fan so he was all excited about this for a number of reasons but he goes he goes when's the last time you sang the anthem i said i've never sang it he goes you've never sang it like at a high school game or anything i go no never. i could see the look on george's face <laughs> yeah and you can see me it? being nonchalant. And yeah. you can see me being nonchalant about it. Like, yeah, and no, I can I'm see I can it. hear George now. Oh boy. <laughs> Love George Bryan. Well, Great guy. Yeah. So he had had like he had had artists who had kind of yeah. blown it before. So I mean, you know, he's oh. been the business for he's been the business for 
what, 40 years, JR? 50 oh, yeah. years? I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, forever. I and mean, a he great worked. story. He'd be a great story oh, to have man. on here one day. Yeah. He's, he stumbled into the on. business like I did. That's <laughs> crazy. I mean, he's had, I mean, stories upon stories. We need yeah. to get him on, actually. Yeah. That's a good idea. Maybe right now, next week or something would be good since we just had the number one. Yeah. But <clears throat> anyway, he had had artists that, you know, blow it, forget the words, what, get nervous, whatever. And so he's like, oh, God. I'm like, George, just give me a couple shots of Jack Daniels, which is what I drank at the time, and I'll be good. <laughs> and he's, he's like, okay. So we go straight to the bar. I get a couple shots of Jack. I'm ready to rock, man. Yeah. We go out on stage or uh, on stage on the field prior to the game, and they're like, "Hey, do you want some ears?" Or I'm like, "Nah, I'll be good." And he's like, "You're not gonna wear like earplugs or anything because for those out there listening that are are unaware, there's a major delay when you sing in a stadium like that." <sighs> So you're, you know, I I would oh say I, if I did that it, it would be like this is what you hear you get so this is me saying oh say oh say is about when you yeah. hear it and it's through the whole thing and you just have to deal with it which is one of the reasons I don't like doing it because it's it's next to damn impossible to be yeah. honest with you that's why I don't give anybody a hard time who sounds bad on the um, the anthem it's incredibly difficult to sing when conditions are perfect um but then you got to fight that it's tough so anyway he's like are you sure i'm like yeah i'll be good and so i just kind of counted in my head when to sing so i did it he's like yeah that was good okay cool i'm like yeah i'm ready i'm good and so um went out and did it it was fine it, it went went well he was just like Oh my I gosh, bet. man! But you know me; I'm just laid back, nonchalant. I don't really get too worked up. I was just, especially back then. Nowadays, maybe I do a little more, but back then, I'm like, eh, it is what it is. And I think it's actually on YouTube. I, I forget the name of whoever uh, um, oh, asked that, that, but I think you can actually find that was Donnie. it on Donnie. I think you can actually find it. But anyway, so that was a long-winded story. But no, it was a. I'll never forget Green Bay because of that. It, and you got to party the night before, celebrate party the night number before, one. Sing it, sing it Lambeau Field. It was Go cool. Show man. out for your new record guy. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I think the Packers won that day. So that was, it was, it was good. And, and you had a, um, and you wore a um, uh, Woodson. Yeah. Was that who it was? Jersey. I think it was Woodson. I think Charles that was Woodson. her DB at the time. Yep. I think that's right. But because they gave me a, um, yep. Um, oh well, gosh, a quarterback who? Uh, what's his Ro face? Oh, um, Rogers. Rogers. They gave me a Rogers. Uh, I'm not wearing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he was later on. He was kind of an asshole to me. So I was like, I'm glad I didn't do that. But yeah. Well, um, I had another one here. From oh, that's a different one. This one is from Becca uh, Megan. Um, Megan. Pronounce, you know, I'm terrible at that, guys. But Becca here on Instagram um, says, Hey, JR, love the podcast. Been a fan of Justin's music for as long as I can remember. I was wondering what your thoughts are, are were on doing an episode with Sharice and Kate. I feel like that would be a good one. Keep it up. Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Then she says, Another question for the podcast When does Justin's unreleased song, Get Rich, come out? Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. So I guess the first one is uh, having Sharice and Kate on. Hell, that'd be great. We've talked about it forever. We just got to make. We just got to do it. Maybe we'll next time we're at your house, we'll all try to do it together or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. It's usually, and Jr. keeps Sharice locked away so she don't tell embarrassing stories. <laughs> and we can we can, and everybody wants Kate to come on, but you y'all know what y'all y'all heard how their household is. If he's here, where do you think she is? <laughs> you know what I mean? They kind of have to tag in and out for certain right. stuff. I, I've seen yeah. it in action, but no we, doubt about know. it. It's it's as chaotic as we say it is. Jr. Oh, yeah. can attest to that. It's not. Yeah, I'm not making it up. 
That's yeah, like when the it, label wants me to do this or that, or so I'm like, guys, I just, I literally, they're like, you can't shoot a three minute video. I'm like, no, I literally can't right now. Yeah. <laughs> Unless know? somebody shows up and tags in because that's, yeah. you know, somebody will show up to your house and it, usually everybody just knows the drill, whether it's me or your parents or friends or whoever just shows up taggy and okay, get this one, do stuff, do get this, yeah. you know, hang out with this yeah. one. I, you're, you're, you're keep, I mean, the other day I got there, I'm talking to two of them and you're texting me from outside. Hey, keep them busy. Got something. I'm, handling something out here with e or something you with know I'm like, yeah, yeah. copy that you know i'm like oh so what's up guys yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah, just, you had literally been there for two minutes and i tag text, in tag I out i didn't even say hi i was like hey keep them in there and keep them occupied <laughs> you're right <laughs> because that's just how it is so uh, so yeah uh we go we're gonna definitely have kate and i'd love to get sharice on too um That'd but be fun. you know for them and then we got to get her um maybe from in. mexico yeah before we go That'd or, be fun. or maybe while we're there we'll do a, we're down something there, crazy who knows kind of fun. um uh, and then the next one she has is about uh when does the unreleased song get rich come out is that it can we can we say that much is get rich or drunk trying gonna be on the new album yeah yeah it'll be we on can the, say that it, huh, so sure. that's what i was gonna say so it'll be it's on the upcoming album um should release that as the first <laughs> grad be, track um, or something yeah, no, it's on the album. Um, it'll be. Um, oh yeah, it could be. Yeah, you're right. Um, and that album I've been saying was going to be out this year. I just found out it'll be out early next year. Oh, uh, okay. Don't ask me why, but there you go, that's everybody. What, that's what that's what we're doing. I don't know the date. I I've still got to have a photo shoot. The music's done. I I still got to do a photo shoot, and I've got to do. Um, I've got to title it. We haven't titled it. Um, and a couple, you know, getting some of the the that kind of stuff that liner notes and that kind of stuff so but that'll be out early next year um and that get rich or drunk trying will be on that album as well yep. as uh with a woman you love and the next single that comes out next month yeah that'd be a good one to release as they do those grat tracks come out uh you know before the album even drops something since we're already out playing it yeah um yeah. But that's good to know because I know I've had a lot of people asking when the album's going to come out. So for everybody that's used the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, send in questions or comments um, to me at JR the Handler at, or Justin at Justin Cole Moore. Um, there's your answer. It's going to be out early next year. And we don't know exactly when yet, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. And uh, don't even know a title on it for sure yet. So maybe send in some suggestions. Who knows? You might you might there hit you, go. The, you might hit a dinger and spring some it spark in old JM's uh, imagination for what he, the final outcome could be. Um, I had this one. Um, this was uh, a friend of mine who was at the show uh, Friday night um uh b uh, b adams on air uh, my buddy brandon adams up there in the on uh, from radio land up there he sent me hey brother thought this was cool i had just had jm's opener for friday night on my show and he was telling me he opened up for justin before and it was the same day if heaven wasn't so far away went number one how cool that all these years later he's opening up for him again and with the woman you love is about to hit number one mind blown yeah that's cool yeah, yeah it was really cool um yeah, I think that was in Indiana, correct? Yes. Yeah, Friday night. Yes. Yes, yeah, so he and his wife I got to meet. They came back oh, good. after the show. Oh, and, yeah, uh, you did. You got to meet Brandon, yeah. Yeah, and um, they said that um, it was cool for me to hear because I'm like, hell, I don't know if anybody even listens to this. You know what I mean? You and I right. I mean, I know people do, but um, – but he was saying how he and his wife don't miss an episode of the podcast, and uh, it somehow helped him through a somewhat difficult time, which was really cool uh, to hear, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, he and his wife hung out with us for, I don't know, an hour or two. Oh, nice. After the show, we played cornhole, and he whipped me at cornhole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was good, good, good to see him, meet him. Really good guy, and yeah, um, it was fun. It was it was a good time. 
So that's cool. Uh, yeah, people always ask about partying on the road and stuff, which we used to a lot. Now we don't. Now uh, that's one of our things. We just play cornhole. We have a few drinks, yeah. but we just play, kind of play cornhole. And we're not. That's none of us are really that good. You're you're probably in the top couple. Will's probably the best right now because he practices a lot. But uh, all good. of us have been playing. And then you know the the young guys, the young guns, Johnny or Brett or Stringbean will just come in and be good every now and then just because they're young. Yeah. But um, and Dave yeah, that's likes kind of it. been our go to lately. Yeah, but we're all going to practice enough for we're eventually all going to be good enough to where if we see other we'll be able to play and really be able to play somebody. We're going to practice this game. We're going to get good at this game. Yeah, and Bobcat, thank you to Bobcat. They sent us a couple more boards. sets of boards, so we have nice. like three sets of boards on the on the road now, so we can play. You know, a, a lot of us at a time now. So yeah, we that's kind of been our go-to. Uh, Roger, I think our guitar player and band leader brought out a set of boards, and we just played one night, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. So pretty much every night after the show, now we we just go play cornhole for a couple of hours, and it, I mean we're sipping on a drink. Yeah, uh, but. It's fun. We get to talk smack to each other. We get to team up with people, you know, and it's it's actually been really good, I think, for to get to know each other because a lot of times, you know, I don't get to hang with the crew guys or the, you know what I mean? And yeah. so it's been really, it's been a lot of fun, I think. Good and it's after morale. the show. It's after the show. There's no stress. We're done for everybody's yeah. done working. Everybody, you know, it's you can go shower or sleep <laughs> or eat or whatever or hang out. It's no pressure. It's yep. everybody just kind of hanging out. And everybody's okay at the game. It's not that hard to play. We all stay competitive and um it's not it's a it's doing something. We're not getting it's our not, teeth knocked out like No, basketball. that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> it's like it's 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 you're moving and you're standing up and you're moving around, so it's not just a sedentary thing where you're just sitting there watching videos or playing, you know, games or whatever. But you're also not it's not you shouldn't hurt yourself unless you get too drunk and just fall or like like, oh. like the time we were off somewhere up there in Ohio or whatever you told me and Brett Y'all are too flipping high to be playing. Y'all go sit down somewhere. Y'all go get hurt. <laughs> you know, y'all suck. <laughs> that. And I literally did. I was like, yeah, I'm going to sit down because we yeah. were looking into this light, though. It was the problem. There was this light behind the way we were throwing, and it was just like every time you throw up, you're looking right in the headlight. It was just we we were terrible. But To be fair, uh, y'all were throwing it like on top of the bus. Um, yeah. Like, we could, <laughs> at one point, I was just – because the light was so bright, I was just getting in the general direction, just flinging it. I was like, hell, I'm just going to sling it. And I was trying to – <laughs> that was one night I did try to pile it on. I kept thinking, man, I am playing terrible. Maybe if I drink more, I'll get better. So I'm out like getting another beer. I'm doing a shot out of the bottle. I'm like, hey, maybe I'll get the buzz. I'll just I'll get my mixture right and I'll start throwing better. But it did not. It yeah, was you got to get. Yeah, you got to get the mixture right. Yeah, I, I could not. So I sat down and somebody stepped in my place. <laughs> but so that say it's something we shouldn't get hurt. It's but it's 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 moving, but it's not something that's not too crazy. But uh, well, that's yeah. cool. I'm glad. I'm it's glad fun, y'all got to man. Meet, it, hang it, out. It kind of started if you remember. It started with uh, you and I watching it on like ESPN or something. The yeah. pros do it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. It, on some long ride. And right. I mean, these jokers don't miss. Automatic. I mean, Automatic. it's like, boom, 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 <laughs> boom. Skip like, around, knock his off. Yeah. yeah. And then when yeah, you get, get up there and really lingo, try to throw like, one. Roll over. Yeah. Uh, they do a roll over. And then they, I, I forget all the terms they use, but it, it's pretty funny. And um, then you go get like, out there and try to act like you're going to do them. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> It'd it's be like not, never yeah. shooting a three pointer and watching Steph Curry shoot three pointers. Then go out there and say, "I could probably get, I could probably hit a couple of them." You've never shot one before. <laughs> I probably hit eight. At, I'd probably hit eight out of ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> you get out there and you don't even hit the backboard or the rim. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, fun stuff. Uh, nuts, I got another man. one here. Um, this one from this one is from Benjamin Knights uh, on Instagram. He said, "Hey, Jr. Just wanted to say, my friend Rowan and I had a great time seeing JM in New Haven, Kentucky, and." We we even caught his pick. Um, we're sorry if we looked a bit miserable. We were on third row, but us Brits are very reserved and not ones to dance. Despite possible appearances, we had a fantastic time, <laughs> and it was the highlight to our trip to the U.S. JM sounding amazing and put on an awesome oh, wow. show. Thank you so much for making our trip so enjoyable. We both sad to be back in the U.K., but both started teacher training this week, so onward and upwards, uh, American flag, British flag. 
That's that was, awesome. Yeah, Benjamin and Rowan. That thank was, y'all for coming to the show. That was fun. Yeah, thank thank y'all. For, yeah, I can't believe you traveled all this way, and that's what you chose to do with one of your last days. But I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I just told him I uh, wish I'd have known. I wish he'd have hit me up right before <laughs> then. I, and he probably did, but I wish I'd have known they were there. I'd have went and made sure to have a beer with them, say hello for coming off, you know, yeah. making a trip like that. Oh, was that that um, distillery? Distiller? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a cool place. Mm-hmm. That was a really neat um, – the name escapes me right now, but for anybody in that area um, – It was the uh, Monk Bottom – or Monk Road. Yeah, uh, okay. The distillery was called – oh, gosh. It's really great, though. If you get a chance to go well, see a show there, go visit the distillery. Um, I know we're not giving you very much information. I'm, right I'm doing here. it right now. It's um, the log, but it's it, really, really awesome venue, like a new venue. It's the log uh, still. It's not log. It's steel not far distillery. from Louisville. Um, South. So if yep. you're if you're in that kind of area, um, I would I would strongly encourage you going and see. And they're doing a lot of good shows. I know Lee had just played there. Um, Dwight Yoke. I think they – Dwight Yoke. I mean, there was a bunch of people that had just played there or were about to play there after us. Really, really neat place. Beautiful little venue, and the area is beautiful. Uh, yeah. And then the distillery is really – I didn't go in it, but uh, the guys that toured it said it was really, really awesome. So I would encourage you to go check it out. Yeah, I say we should go uh, – definitely go back there and play again next year. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see here. We've got one. This is on Twitter. Heath Lewis um, says, uh, I think Terry Bradshaw would be a great guest for the podcast. A Steelers legend and just a good old country boy. Hashtag Justin Moore podcast. No kidding. Yeah, that would be a good one. Um, had one here just saying, what's up for my buddy? I actually Duncan have Robertson. a mutual contact. Um, yep. Maybe I can see if I can make that happen. We need to. Yeah, that would be. He would Baz, be a good Baz. one. Yeah, I, was th- I, th- I thought about that. Had him at the had touchdown him. club. Yeah. yeah, he had a good list of the stuff. <laughs> I would love to talk to a lot of those guys. He just had Gruden and Coach O and a bunch of different. Oh I man, him. he's the last two weeks. I know we're getting off topic, but we're talking about the Little Rock Touchdown Club and yeah. and the guy who runs it started it, does everything for it. <laughs> is my co-host on the radio show. Yeah, in the he's, he's been a. He's been a guest on the podcast. He's been a guest on the podcast, David Basil. We call him Baz. Um, last week he had Gruden, and it was all over sports news, ESPN. You know, they were talk, picking up, like, clips of Baz talking to him at the mm-hmm. Touchdown Club. And uh, this – yesterday he had Ed Orgeron, same kind of deal. It's He put out a little video clip, Basil did – yesterday and it's already gotten like four million views or some wow. crazy something uh from orgeron and of course orgeron was just as ridiculous as you could imagine him being he's i he cussing i mean he talk, he's like he, I, he we had a meeting here you know and they said coach is not going good he's, and he's saying this in front of a a crowd of maybe 800 it's on live radio it's being taped yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said, you're not going well. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, he don't care. He, he, don't, he, don't, well, he don't even work for anybody anymore. He don't have no. to care at all. He just does public speaking for tons of money. It's, he got a ton of money. From, yeah. Got fired, got a ton of money. So, well, that was where – that's the clip that's picked up all these views. You can probably oh find God. it out there. But Good So, man. he goes, yeah, no shit. He, and then they told me, hey, Coach, uh, you got $17 million left on your contract. Uh, we're going to pay you that, but we're going to have to let you go. He goes, all right, uh, tell me where do I sign and which door to leave out of. <laughs> sounds sounds good to me <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I'm doing a terrible impression, but no, that was good cold. night, man. He, he's just like ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. But it was funny. It was funny. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, I got a shout-out here from my buddy Duncan Robertson uh, and he, uh, the, from the twi- the Robertson Twins and the Climb the Ladder podcast. Uh, shout-out to those guys. Send some love always. Had this picture I know we sent amongst each other and everybody in country music on on that's in country music world that uh, <laughs> is on any social media. And, uh, Hank Jr. with his fish from uh, Labor Day. Good. Bo Look at Somebody him. made a comment. Said that's the same he looks outfit. Like my... he's doing, he looks like he's doing this. 
Somebody said that it looks like something my grandpa will wear. Hell, he's as old as your grandpa. Yeah, he should. Except the difference in him and your grandpa yeah, is he's, he's a he's William. in his seventies. He's a legend. He's, yeah, he's, he's still, a legend. Co- a he sent the, He put this picture up, Justin. The, the 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 caption was a country boy can still survive. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. I can hear him saying it too, buddy. He's a Woo. he's an icon. That's what he is. Icon. I'll, Just I'm gonna send him. this to Cody so we can uh, put up. This is uh, this is. Uh, you didn't know it, but last time you were the doctor, I got him to run a quick uh, scan of your noggin, and this is what they sent me back. <laughs> That's pretty good. Anytime you, don't re- anytime you don't reply to an email or a text on time, I'm just going to send that to the group and let them know he's busy, he'll get to you, he's got something else he's dealing with right now. <laughs> That's pretty I saw good that. Right I don't even know what that was on, and I thought, is that Justin? And so I was like, i got to say, let me go ahead and it probably is. The, fav- favor that for a while. Um, That's pretty funny. Uh, Courtney Rianne Lewis, this is uh, Heath Lewis's uh, wife, uh, said he listens to every single podcast. He works so hard for me and our kids, and I would be so grateful if y'all could give him a shout-out during your podcast. And I think I actually we talked about it, I already did. But uh, what's up, Heath? Thank you for listening always, brother. And, uh, yeah, thanks, bringing home Heath. The bacon, yeah, bringing home the bacon for the fam. Keep on hard working. Good old folks of America. Um, Love it. Let's see here. Uh... Oh, this was actually from him. Uh, he said he got it. Y'all know what I mean. He said his Mount Rushmore, this is Heath's, my Mount Rushmore of country music would be George Strait, J.M., Don Williams, and Hank Jr. God bless and go hogs. Wow. Good company there. Yeah, thank you. I don't, I'm not deserving of that, but thank you. Um, <clears throat> oh, I uh, got one here. This was from um, Zach Briscoe. Did you kill the coyote last week? Did you get him? No. I ain't seen him since, but I know he's got to be here. Eddie told me. Eddie's our bus driver. Eddie told me to uh, put a chicken in a cage out in the pasture, and he's like, he'll be right there. You know, so Eddie know, knows, I too. I haven't seen him since. And so, I would have shot him that day, but we literally, I mean, I had him in the crosshairs uh, with a 270, but, um, again, it was right in front of my tractor. I didn't want to shoot my radiator out or something. But, anyway, um and I didn't want to make sure my little cousin wasn't out there. But anyhow, um, that day was so crazy. I had to leave to go to, I think it was upstate New York. And so we had to leave on the bus like no later than like 3 or 4 o'clock, something like that. <clears throat> we had to do the podcast I was doing stuff for something. I don't remember. What, I had other stuff going. I'm like, oh, I need to go take care of this. But I, I just literally couldn't at the time. He was right. out there. If I would have, you guys wouldn't have gotten a podcast last week. And we wouldn't even be discussing a coyote. Right. So I need right. to. I, he'll be I back. Need to, he'll, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. I, um, I will report back when I do kill it. Because I will kill it had one on here this was uh, i think from today this is from instagram uh i'm brandy adams uh says uh congrats on another number one hope to hear more number ones soon songs like hearing things and more than me are great country songs guitar armstrong oh thank you i appreciate that yeah more than me was probably my favorite off of the latest album that was a great one I had some. I'll have to text these to Cody so he can post them. But these were pretty funny, and I don't know if I sent this to you today. It was a um, um, a picture of uh, Coach Pittman from high school days or college days. I guess. Oh yeah, he's got a Coors, beer by his foot. With his Coors Light by his foot. Yeah. I'm like, yes, that's my guy. Uh, people have I asked mean, me that that know that like, y'all know the new coach from Arkansas. I was like, oh yeah. I'm like, dude, and he's a bro, man. He's like. God, he's so awesome. I mean, he, I don't, a, what you see is what you get. I, I mean, yeah, I'm not trying really to oversell him. that either, but he just is a, is a genuinely just nice, normal. He's what you want your football coach to be like. I mean, to yeah. me, I love Coach I Pittman. Mean, I think he's great. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, we, we were really good friends when he was here the first time. Yeah. And you would think, well, that would probably wane. But – Hell, we'd go to Georgia when he went to Georgia. He still come to my shows, and we still oh, yeah. hung out. We remained oh, yeah. really, really good friends. And yeah, obviously, since he's back, honestly, now that he's back here, because he's so damn busy, because he's a head coach. I mean, you never stop. I see him less now. 
I, I talked to him quite often, but right. seem less now than I did when he was hell at Georgia because he was an O-line coach. And, you know, they're all super busy, but when you're the a head different coach, level, way yeah. more, you know. But, yeah. But yeah he's, a, he's a tremendous person. And I had that one. It's LSU's new head coach, if you can see who that is, it's Joe Exotic. <laughs> Fit right in there. Oh, uh, that, is, that is perfect. Right. I'm not uh, kidding. I had this. No, this I'm, is some I'm some of my boys. This is speaking of Louisiana. This is some of my boys from Homa sent me this, and this was down <laughs> south in Chauvin, south uh, of there. All them Gators. Golly. One of them they said. One picture they sent was uh, one they a buddy of theirs got 13 foot two inches. That's a, big, that's a big sucker. Hey, I had something, and we'll wrap this up because I know you got stuff to do, and I got to go cook. Wow. Um, what Reese's you still, I'm going to do some pork chops, and I got some uh, zucchini and squash I'm going to put on the grill, mm. and I got Charisse a um, like a Rouse's prepackaged thing, skewer of chicken and uh, veggies and stuff. I'm going to put on the grill for her. She don't like me. pork chops? Yeah, she does. I'm just doing some different stuff in case she wants to use that. She's, she did, I saw she did a bunch of lettuce up earlier, and normally when she does a big thing of lettuce, I mean, she's going to eat – chicken salads for a while so i figured yeah. i'd get her some chicken in case she wanted to Made have that up. for a salad go ahead Man, I you know me i make plenty <clears throat> extra to have more than one meal out of the deal. oh yeah i i usually don't every maybe once a month or something but i, um, I had a bunch thought, of good pork pork chops and chicken last night so i fried pork chops and fried ooh. chicken oh my gosh so good <laughs> so good so good so good so this morning i had pork chop and eggs with grits nice. son so nice. good I bet. Um, I got here. This was just something random on something I was looking at on one of these NBA, you know, legend page deals I look at. And it was um, players who scored an exact amount of points. And it started at like 10 down to one. It was this set of things. Like in their career? In their career had exactly nine points. How many times they scored exactly nine points in their career or how many times they scored five points. And I thought this was cool and, and just a fun fact of history here um, that someone we know well or you know well, I've met a few times, a legend, uh, and you talked to him on the sports show. I talked Big to him Joe? Time. Big Joe Klein is on the list um, because Big Joe Klein was the third most of all time to have exactly four points in a ball game. He did it 150 times, 150 professional basketball games. He had four points. And people That's say third most, third have most, four the, the most and, was one sixty by T R Dunn, which and then Sean Livingston, you remember him, the tall point guard. Oh yeah, he had one hundred fifty-seven. Warriors, right? Yep, he had one hundred fifty-seven. Then Big Joe had one fifty, and people say four points, dude. You go like we just said. You go, you go score one point in the NBA. If you yeah. go score one point five times in the NBA, you're pretty. You're probably top ten of in the in the world right now playing basketball. You know and what he, I mean? But that that was probably four points. 12 rebounds, 12 rebounds, two blocks, and two blocks, four yeah, assists, something yeah. like that. He yeah, wasn't out there to score. No, I no. mean, I don't think he ever. Well, in the I list, mean, he was, did in college, but yeah, but in the pros, that was not his deal. And I tell you, on the list of nine or ten down, Derek Fisher was on there like three or four times. So you think Derek Fisher's on oh, pro? Yeah. He, he had a big career and all, but he scored eight points like 120 times and seven points. You know, um, yeah, that's but, interesting. But Joe made the list twice. Because oh. Joe also scored exactly two points, bringing him in second place all time. Uh, at 190 games, he scored exactly two points. Wow! I don't think I'm going to share this with him because he's going <laughs> to he's going to want it to be more. Well, we but I, it we does can, tell I, you how many games he played. And that's what I'm saying. That's 190. He had that 150. <laughs> like I said, you go anybody who thinks they're a yeah. hot shot, you go to the NBA and you score one point in 100 games. And then I'll put you on a list. Yeah, you'd be great. Yeah. You'll go. Uh, you know. Anyways, I, yeah, I, if you're on I, any, if you're on any list, even if it's the worst player ever in the history of the NBA list, that's what I'm saying. You, you were you were a damn good. If ball you scored player. one point in one NBA <laughs> one game, you're better than it. Probably anybody ever went to your high school. 
<laughs> you know, probably better than anybody in your state, in your county. Yeah, you're, in you your know, age, whatever. You're, yeah, you probably were at one time the best person in your state. You know. Yeah. Uh, so and then, uh, but I mean, the list of these people who are on these lists with him, it's it is a who's who of like. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Studs throughout what, the so year. So what are some of the like the higher scoring ones? Like thirty I, I points just, or whatever. I just took a picture of this oh, and saved it, I so you. I don't have the rest of them. But I can go back and find it. But I know, like even this Nazir no, Muhammad. Who played for a long career? Uh, he had 189 games for two points, and Harvey Catchings had two. Harvey Catchings was a stud. He played with Dr. J and stuff. They they were yeah. in title contentions. I mean, that guy was a. I hear the picture of him, him and Bird going at it. You know, so like I said, it's and Sean Livingston was a champ with him uh, in Golden State. Oh, so it's it's numerous uh, times I think. Yeah, and and I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. He was but like some their of six was, man, and for, it was like for a while. Three points was a was an interesting one because there's a lot of people who were just three point specialists and came right. in just to hit one three pointer, <clears throat> right? And that that was like you know, and they were the ones you would expect. You're like, yeah, I see he would come in for one. You need him for one three point. Yeah, and Robert Ory, big shot Bob, more titles than anybody except for Bill Russell. Uh, you know, uh, right? He was on there for like the s- seven points. I think he was the third most to ever have seven points wow. in a game or something. That was and probably I mean, talking- two threes and a free throw. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Probably, you know, to win a game, you yeah. Know. So, but I thought that was cool. We can give it up with Joe. He was he, he's on some list of. Uh, I mean, he's on a bunch of lists. But I thought I thought that was cool. And I was like, oh, that somebody is cool. we know, Arkansas guy played at Arkansas Bulls. And he said he would he would be on with us too. So maybe we should do. That. Maybe when it gets closer to basketball season, we'll have him on. Yeah, we need to get uh, we need to get one of our, some of our football buddies on soon while we're ta- while we're doing football. I know, um, obviously, like Coach Pittman and a lot of the. The, the people who are busy, busy, ain't, won't have time anytime soon. But maybe we can get um, ESPN guy or, or, or somebody from over there, guy or gal from over there, or Marty yeah. or somebody like that. We should have had Coach Pittman on before the season. But, man, they're going through fall camp. And I, I just hate to – I'm like – Yeah, you don't want to I'm such a Razorback fan. I'm like, you, you got – more things I I want you to worry about than this. So right. Maybe after the season would be good, kind of recap the season or something like that, or maybe a bye week, but probably after the season. But <laughs> like you said, maybe I can um, I can use Baz a little bit. I know he's about to have um, Dory Noka on the Touchdown Club. Maybe we can have him on. Um, you know, I've got some other guys that in in my mind uh, that we Jacob Hester uh, played at LSU. Yeah. He's on the SEC Network. He has his own radio show as well. He was a great player at LSU, um, and I really really like him. He's a really good guy, even though he played at yeah. LSU. Um, I want to get Sterner on too. Maybe get his perspective. Sterner would be great. Um, Chris Doring. Um, some of those guys maybe we can get on. Yeah, that, that that'd be fun. Well, we'll get we'll get this wrapped up. Uh, I'll run through. You know, we'll try to c- come see us at a show out on the road. We've got this weekend off, um, but we'll be back next week. We're heading out on the fifteenth to Billings, Montana. The sixteenth, Butte, Montana. The seventeenth, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> then we're going to go down to San Jose for a few days and do some stuff with our old buddy Nate Deaton uh, and the KRTY bunch. And then we're going to head over to the East Coast, Bloomsburg, PA, on the twenty third uh, of October. Um, or excuse me, of September the 24th. We're going to be in Elmira, New York. Um, then we, I don't know if have we announced this yet. We're going to play on the 30th of September uh, in Fayetteville. If we, if we can't, I'm sure yeah, we, we can have talk an, about Yeah, it. we have announced it. Yeah. We have, okay. Yeah, yeah well, we're so, going to be in Fayetteville. You can talk about yeah, that. We'll be in, we'll, yeah, we'll be in Fayetteville. So, I don't know, every other year, I think, maybe we've done this <clears throat> for the past – I don't know, seven or eight years. Uh, we play a show that uh, the, all the proceeds. This is mainly for Razorback fans out there, or if you're if you're close uh, over in Oklahoma or something, maybe Missouri or something, <clears throat> you might want to come over. But all the proceeds go to the Razorback Foundation. Uh, but but the venue. I mean, it's a normal show. I mean, but. Um, but the venue's a really cool little outdoor spot. Probably held, what, JR, a couple of thousand maybe or something. Yeah. I, maybe. I, I barely remember the last time, imagine yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but well, last time was when John Daly came right. out and uh, oh, yeah. our AD and yeah, a oh, bunch of coaches. Yeah. And Anyway, 
it's a lot of fun. Uh, but that's the um, that's the night before we play Alabama. So the hope is uh, that that I don't think there's any doubt you guys will be four and zero at that point. But the hope is we'll both be four and zero at that point. If so, man, I mean, college game day could even be there. I mean, it it would be a probably a top ten matchup at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, we got to go beat South Carolina, which ain't gonna be easy. Uh, and then we still got to play A and M, which is gonna be very difficult. But you know, yeah, a, a boy can a boy can dream. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> we're gonna party so, before either way, so it's, we're gonna have yeah. fun that weekend, no matter who. But yeah, it'll be a fun show regardless. And you can go to justinmoremusic.com and check out all these dates, get links to tickets, uh, info on shows, all that fun stuff. You can go there um, and check all that kind of stuff out along as along with um, links to all Justin's stuff, uh, social media, uh, videos, YouTube, all that fun stuff. And um, you can find the Justin Moore podcast on anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, you can fi- watch us on YouTube. Um, you can you, – uh, Justin Moore Podcast has an Instagram page. I'm at JR the Handler on Instagram and Twitter. That's at Justin Cole Moore Instagram and Twitter. Uh, blue check mark on JM. And again, we say this every week because we know it's real. No one in our outfit is going to call you, text you, email you, m- reach out to you on a social media chat thing or any kind of thing like that asking you for information or money we don't have a social media manager. We don't have a <clears throat> this or a that. There's none of that. That's all. That's all fake so and justin's happily married so am i there is no side people talking to you if someone is talking to you the saying they're justin or me they're scamming you if they're saying they're any country music or any celebrity in general they're scamming you so stop um just put that out there public yeah. service announce we have to do please, every week cause, please stop yeah because we actually watched some I videos mean, please, the other please, week please 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 stop stop messaging my wife <laughs> yeah it's it's I not, mean it's not causing any problem in my relationship. It's just I feel bad for y'all. Yeah. Like, oh, so we watched was, the videos 60, on Dr. Phil. It's terrible. I don't know. There was a sixty five year old lady here recently, which hey, nothing wrong with being sixty five. I hope I make it there. That her roommate which I don't know why a sixty five year old needs a roommate, but that's a whole different story. Te- not texted, but sent some kind of message, some kind of way to my wife that I'm dating her 65-year-old roommate. And I'm like, come on now. I yeah. mean, just that's, come it's on. It's not happening. Well, it was like the, it off. It was like the, doc- it off. the Dr. <laughs> Phil video we watched of the lady who was convinced that she was dating Post Malone. And she sent all of her money she ever had to him because he likes to play games. You know, I mean, he it's likes just, to play games. Make sure I'm real. It was just so y'all just please watch out for these scammers out there. I have people send me stuff, and I tell everybody just hey, report hey, them. Google but I've re- the Google the Doctor Phil um, Post Malone deal. Watch that and share it with everybody who you think might be loony yeah. enough to fall for this. Stuff. And that's what you look like. It's all you need to know. That. Yeah, um, it's just uh, it's something else. Um, but anyway, uh, well, so that'll be on the 30th. You can find info for that. Then on the 7th of October, we're going to be in Corinth, Mississippi. Then we're going to go to Ridgeland, South Carolina on the 8th. Then out to Vegas on the 13th and uh, Cedar City, Utah on the 14th. Uh, and then we've got our uh, trip out to Mexico to play a show down there. Uh, and again, we mentioned la- on last week's podcast, the show in Mexico, we don't have tickets. We don't have, you have to be staying at the resort for the festival to go to the concerts there that weekend. Just want to put that on everybody's radar. And I had a thing for one of our longtime listeners here. Um, it, it was a good idea because we haven't done, um, th- we don't do this normally unless I have some special day um, that, uh, I need to look up, but um, when we have guests, we always have the country music song of the day. So uh, Joanna Rozier, um, or Joanna Rozier, sent in uh, this, and she's always listening. And we appreciate her, Joanna, for always listening and, and chiming in and uh, being a big fan of the podcast. Um, she said, "Hey, Jr., uh, I was wondering when y'all do the podcast if you could do what year you were born song." Eight thirty one sixty seven for me and my sister Joanna and Diana Pennington. Um, so for Joanna, I looked it up, and this is one I, he one of my favorite voices ever. Um, and it's a it's a it'd be a tough one. I doubt you'd get it. It's sixty seven, late August nineteen sixty seven. Want to take a stab at the artist? 
Uh, I mean, is it a well-known artist? You know to, it. You know him. Me. You know him, but you would. It wouldn't be your top five, ten. Uh, pick. Freddie, Freddie Fender. I don't know. Uh, close, but this guy goes by. Uh, well, I can say he was from Alabama. So obviously, I know who he is. <laughs> he, that, Webb Pierce. I don't know. I know everybody. Just, that's no, probably too Webb, too late yeah, for him. I think Webb was actually from Texas or Louisiana. No, he was around uh, before that actually. Um, that's what I mean. I, that sixty-seven yeah. would be too 67, late. Sixty-seven. Yeah, sixty-seven yeah. would have been all a bunch of Merle Haggard and uh, even um, um, uh, Marty Robbins still Waylon having big and hits. Yeah, that was a little. They would have had their clean. That was back when they were clean cut before I they were I guess Freddie would have been in the seventies. Yeah, he Freddie was. Freddie probably yeah. was in the seventies. Yeah, because he didn't yeah. have his. He, yeah, because he had his. He had to. You know, I've told that story about him having to go to prison for, for, a tiny, bit of pot in uh in the sixties. Uh, I think that was actually when he was in jail was sixty seven, uh for a joint of weed. Him and his bass player went to jail in a prison camp for three years. So, uh, but I digress. This is artist goes by the nick. He had a he had a great nickname. The Southern Gentleman was his nickname. Oh, uh. Ah, I know that. I know uh, you do because we we he comes on we listen to him all the time on the bus, and I say it every time. The Southern gentleman. All right, give it to me, Sonny James. There you go. And the song was Joanna. The song was "I'll Never Find Another You" by Sonny James. That's a great tune too, right there. If anybody wants to know what the '60s, late '60s era country music had, um, that's a good one to listen and get a. A time capsule because that was that was well done uh singing playing recording and putting out hey and this is uh this day in country music here's a fun little one here uh september 7th 1977 crystal gale was at number one on the u.s country chart with don't it make my brown eyes blue the song was written by richard lee and his first and it first appeared on gale's 77 album we must believe in magic the song became gale's first and biggest crossover pop hit reaching number two on the billboard hot 100 for three weeks and won the singer a grammy award for best female country performance in 99 the song was recognized by ascap as one of the 10 most performed songs of the 20th century wow how about that so fun fact of the day um yeah and we're gonna get back out on the road i'm gonna do a reading here for everybody um and i hope that answered some questions for people uh as far as you know justin's uh, we talked about the the new songs will be out soon uh early october yeah within the first few weeks of october that'll be out and then a uh, new album coming beginning of next year so all kinds of fun stuff on the horizon yeah. uh we've got some guests we've talked to about coming on we've got some other ideas about that but everybody remember to use the hashtag it's a really Moore unique podcast. yeah go ahead some unique, different guests than we've ever had, mm -hmm. too. You know, we've had some good. I mean ones. We've had some, even lately the good ones. It Kurt was good the other week. We've had some great ones. And you go back, I, I you know, every now and then I'll go through when I'm when I'm adding something on our Dropbox. Or something I'll see all the past episodes, and I'm thinking, oh, I, not that I forgot somebody was on there. I'm just like, man, what a yeah what a list. We have had some guests out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need to figure out how many made. shows we're at too. We're probably at a hundred. Got to be over a hundred, I would think. We're close, right? Got to be. I, I need to look that up. Got to be close. Got to be. Yeah, but yeah. We're gonna have. We might have some politicians coming up, which we've never had. We might have some football people coming up. We've never had uh, some uh, artists. We we've yet to have. So yeah, we're, yep. we're working on all that stuff. I know we always say that, and you guys probably roll your eyes, but. We are, we we really are working on it's all strategic, that. everybody. We can't mm -hmm. let you in on our plan. We got a master plan. Everybody can't be in on it. And uh, and yeah, I thought George Briner was a good one. And um and I thought that maybe would we be could, great. And we could even do a twofer, so we don't have to waste much of their time, so they can go continue on uh, kicking butt. We could get him maybe in Scott or Shetta. Maybe come on do a do twenty minutes each or something <laughs> would be fun. Like we talk about uh, career stuff. You know, I think that would be cool. For sure. So, well, all right, sure. well, I'm going to tag out. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to go cook some uh, cook some grub for the fam. And uh, I'm sure your kiddos will be home. You need to get the last few minutes for you before chaos ensues again around your house. I'm sure you got stuff to do. And, uh, yeah, we'll get back. them fed, get them uh, shired up, and get the ass in bed. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what about next week because I think I'm flying to your house on like Tuesday so we can leave Wednesday to go up to wherever we got to go to or to montana 
that right? So maybe yeah, we'll do I think one. We gotta, I th- I'm trying. We, we play Thursday, I believe. Correct? Yeah, we do. So we have to fly out. And I want to say Wednesday it's evening. a pretty long. Oh, we're fly. I thought we were riding the bus. We're going. This one we're going to fly. Okay, because uh, Eddie asked me, and I he said y'all still riding the bus? I said I think so, but uh, we're going. Billings so is we too far. To we're going to fly that, that. That was um. Vegas. Yeah, let him know on that. Yeah, I'll let him know. Vegas and Denver. We were we decided we'll just ride the bus, but Billings that's a long ways. I found a flight. We'll just go out there that evening before. <clears throat> Cool. Um, so anyway, but I'll be coming to your house on Tuesday, so I don't know if we can maybe record one that evening or we can do it Wednesday or something. Maybe we might do one in person. Maybe we can get Kate on. Who knows? Yeah, for sure. Fun stuff. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all for tuning in again this week to the Justin Moore Podcast. Remember to use the ju- hashtag Justin Moore Podcast anywhere you interact with us. Uh, like, rate, comment, hit that subscribe button, notification button, hit all the buttons and bells and whistles you can because that's what keeps this thing going, and we appreciate you for it. Um, and I'll, we'll see y'all next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening Uh, that my wife Kate has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer. All that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning in to the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Just More podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers, too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever. A pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. I read this one 
passage from Uncle Charlie's book. Uh, Let's all make the day count uh, earlier this year for Valentine's Day, but I thought with uh, Justin's current single going number one with The Woman You Love, uh, it was only fitting that I read it again. So here you go. Number 53, spending your life with someone you love. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Genesis 2.24. In the olden days, many marriages were arranged by parents. Two people who had never seen each other were supposed to exchange vows and live happily ever after. I can't imagine letting someone else choose the woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I can't understand people pledging to love and honor someone they don't even know or haven't had a chance to sit down with to discuss their likes and dislikes, ambitions, and faith in God. Marriage is so much more than a physical side of love. To be successful, your bond needs to run much deeper than attraction. There will be storms to weather, decisions to make, and sacrifices to be made. Some superficial romance or physical attraction alone will simply not weather those storms. Finding the love of your life is a serious task that requires diligence, good judgment, soul searching, and honesty. My wife and I are in our 53rd year of marriage and I can't imagine my life without her. Every day is a fresh and new adventure when you share it with the love of your life. Let's all make the day count.